ancient Phoenician port city mentioned huh? in the Bible. How do you pronounce it? Tyre. Tyre. Hello, my historical fashion friends, and today we're going to do a little prep for uh, what I hope will be coming soon, which is a 100 subscriber celebration. And in one of my previous videos, I made this hat, uh, which is based off of, hold on a second, this hat from Medieval Garments Reconstructed. And it is going to match my Foundations Revealed outfit, uh, which you can see me make on this channel as well. And for that celebration, we will be uh, going on a trip together to the grocery store dressed in my Foundations Revealed costume. So, in that uh, previous video, which is the Halloween video, I promised that I would add a trim to this hat and originally I was going to make a new trim, but then I found this leftover piece from my Foundations Reveal costume, and it is exactly the right amount, which I believe means it was meant to be, they're meant to go together. And today we're going to attach that trim, and I'm gonna show you how I attach my hand-woven uh, card weaving trims to my garments. So yes, I, wove this myself and I am really looking forward to now getting to choose a different set of colors to work with. There'll be a new weaving video coming up next week and I am going to weave a belt because we're going to sort of take a like sidestep kind of backwards because I wanted to make a viking apron dress but I could not find uh, the right amount of wool secondhand for like a really long amount of time. But then I found some recently and it is on its way to me. So that video is coming up as well. So we'll be making a belt to go with that and maybe some trims and also I'll be ordering uh, the brooches to go with that as well. So I am really, really looking forward to that. So I have here some off-white thread and I choose the thread color to match basically the outer edge of my tablet woven bands because it's actually going to show more on the band than it will on the garment it's attaching to. So in order to kind of hide that, I choose a color that matches the band, not the garment. If they're kind of the same color, you don't really have to worry about that. So we are going to thread the needle. This is the part of my videos which I'm always removing because it takes me so long to thread needles because I wear glasses and I don't have contacts, but I don't obviously have medieval glasses. So don't, uh, you know what? I, don't, I believe the glasses didn't exist then. And I'm going to put here something about the invention of glasses, a note of some kind. Yeah, so basically I'm never wearing my glasses in any of these videos, and I am just suffering. I often lose my glasses, which I'm sure is relatable to a lot of people. And when I most recently purchased my glasses, I actually purchased four very inexpensive pairs. I never buy expensive ones because I literally lose them and break them so often. And I got them probably a year ago. And I have since broken two. <laughs> well, I broke one and then I popped the lenses out of another pair, which I really, really liked. But I thought, well, I'll just pop them out and put them right back in. But then when I put them back in, I don't know if there was something very important about the angle or I bent the frames, but uh, yeah, basically they don't really work now. It's super distorted. So that's a shame. Uh, and then I lost both of my other pairs for some time. Oftentimes I can't see. That was, a, that was a basically a long way to kind of explain that. So when I save my remnants, if I've attached it to something else and I don't need an extra piece, I basically just run the end through the machine and just secure it kind of temporarily until it 
reaches its final destination, shall we say. Um, so right now, I'm just gonna kind of trim off the little extras here. And uh, I really like this hat because it's lined in linen and it's basically reversible because of that. So I'm going to not poke through to this layer because I think it would be kind of fun to sort of have a dual purpose hat that could be kind of like, you know, linen on one side and then the wool on the other with the trim. So I will be putting the trim on the wool side and I'm just gonna trim the other edge of this. This morning when I was leaving my storage unit because I wanted to film in here because I'm filming my tablet weaving episode like right after this and it's too hard to do in that other room. I was like, I was dressed like this and then I went out with a big box of my stuff that I was carrying and one of my neighbors came out of his apartment and then just like kind of like stopped and looked at me. And then he took forever to um, shut and lock his door. I think because he was, he was not far enough away from me to have me not notice that he was behaving strangely, <laughs> but also like not close enough that he was obligated to say hi. But my storage unit is like very close to the elevator. So I think he was afraid that I was going to talk to him. And so he just stayed fiddling with his doorknob until I like finished picking up my stuff and locking my storage unit door and then walking down the hall. And I just thought it was so funny because I definitely wouldn't have talked to him anyway because I don't really start conversations with strangers um, because stranger danger. But it was, it was a really, really funny reaction. So yeah, I am trying to start the trim basically where the other seam is. And I am just going to, ooh, do I want that to be the final end? I think I should have that be the final end and this is gonna be the starting end because it's more beautiful. Let me just, uh, we're gonna see how much we would have left over. You won't see any kittens in this video today because they're off at an adoption event to become my adopted little babies and, and meet their forever families, which I am both happy and like, sad about because I love them so much. And now it's really quiet without them here, but my adult cat is really happy. Um, yeah, so I'm basically just going to fold over the little edge here and then when the other one comes to the other side, it'll basically like meet and then I will uh, kind of sew them together so there's not a gap. So let's commence. I'm going to start it on the bottom side. Basically, I kind of do a little whip stitch around both sides, I guess not around, like through both sides of the trim and I uh, secure it that way so it doesn't kind of flip over on one side. <sighs> I also have um, two auditions to film this weekend. But last night when I was pretending to be mama cat with my kids and like lying on the ground with them and trying to be on their level, they were really excited and like started running around and wanting to like kind of play with me. And they're like, you're down by our level. And they were super excited. But um, then one of them like ran so fast that it like went up and over my head and like scratched my lip. And then my lip was bleeding. So I will be filming those on Sunday and not Saturday because I am hoping that my lip will somewhat heal by then. 
Y'all might be having a hard time to see. I'm gonna try to turn it this way. Basically, I just kind of go like through both layers and around and around, just really basic. I try to tighten it just like a little bit so it's not too visible, the uh, extra stitch it, as much as I would love an hour long video. You know, I would actually be interested to see how much, how long this actually takes to do. Because it's only a hat. So I guess it should theoretically go pretty fast. That might be really interesting. I also want to get back on doing dyeing projects. So I am going to look into what color dye I want to do next because I still have some fabric left over from the same fabric I used to dye, tried to dye blue for the woad disaster. There's still a bunch of that left. Initially I was hoping to dye it green, but then recently I found like a bunch of green wool secondhand. So I might try to do yellow. Although I was really tempted to try and dye this linen yellow because I did a little tester sample at one point of using turmeric dye on linen and it came out really nice, but I have to look more into, you know, what, I guess the reality of like, whether that would be accurate for kind of a European persona. Um, although I do also want to do a few projects for Lebanese historical costume, but since I don't know a ton about that already, because obviously growing up in the United States, at least most of the time, uh, growing up in the United States, we learn primarily European history or US history and not very much about Middle Eastern history, unless it is in the way that it relates to European or, you know, United States history. You know, if you're American, you know how it is. It's like, you do basically like one week on like Africa, Asia, and <laughs> South America. And it's like, the rest is just European history, unless you took a special class on it. Um, so I really wanna make sure I get that right. and. I'm really interested in looking into it and learning more about what my own ancestors were probably wearing. Um, I don't really have a lot of details on my family prior to them arriving in the United States in the late 19th, early 20th century, um, because if any records do exist, it's really hard for at least me to be able to access even with like ancestry sites and such because they would only be written in Arabic and I don't read Arabic. So um, that's an obstacle. And um, basically because my grandmother's mother never could read or write in either English or Arabic, she really only spoke Arabic. Um, she, when my great grandfather died in the 80s, they kind of lost track of our Lebanese family. So uh, we don't have a lot of connection to them over there anymore. But yeah, anyway, I would love to explore Middle Eastern garments uh, from history and the small bit of research that I've done. I really, really like the looks of it, but I really want to be able to try to find more, if possible, sources that aren't heavily influenced by a Western gaze because a lot of the, well, materials that I can find on it are sort of earlier, you know, 18th, 19th century kind of depictions by Western people about Middle Eastern people uh, and their dress. So it'd be interesting to 
I guess read some translations of, if possible, more original texts from Lebanon. But uh, I definitely feel like the turmeric dye would probably work really great for some costume from that area because the colors are just so vibrant and of course it's uh, way more common to have turmeric in the Middle East versus, you know, medieval Western Europe. And just the variety of dyes, as I think I mentioned in my Roman video, my great grandfather, his, him and his family were originally from Tyre. And of course that is where the Romans got their gorgeous purple dyes, uh, which were made from, unfortunately, snails. Uh, Tony would not be happy, RIP Tony. And so it's possible that some of my ancestors might have been active in actually creating dyes. Uh, I don't have any details on them, but it would be really cool if they were. Um, and also, uh, it's kind of interesting that my great-grandfather was a tailor and my great-grandmother was a seamstress, so I feel like uh, they might have liked these videos. Well, my great-grandmother wouldn't have known what I was saying, but I think she might have liked the look, hopefully. So now that I have reached this sort of end portion, I really don't want to cut it because then I would have to go to my other room and sewing machine it again. So I'm just going to mush it down and sew through the layers and then connect the two ends to each other And boom. We have one row of stitches completed. So yeah, now I'm just going to kind of, basically I just go like back and forth between the two ends that are like butted together. Let's be mature. And I am going to secure them to each other, so when the hat is, I guess, moving, I don't know how much the hat's gonna move, but it won't come undone, or uh, I guess show a gap is more what I'm trying to avoid here. And then from there, I will just continue on to the other row of st stitches on the top. Um, I'm gonna have to switch threads soon because I am running out, but no worries about that. Lately, I've been obsessed with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and um, I just am very, very into playing and it is hard to stop playing, even though for some reason I also get extremely agitated while playing, but I just am like, <laughs> probably like a lot of people super obsessed with just like Viking stuff in general. According to my family search family tree way back in like 800s, my family was, well, at least on my dad's side, some of my ancestors were from Norway. So that is super exciting to me. Um, yeah. So for this side, I'm kind of doing a different stitch where uh, almost like a, a back stitch a little bit because I don't want it to show a ton on the top edge here. It's not as bad on the bottom edge because people won't see it as much. But it's hard to super hard to tell the validity of those sorts of uh, basically tracking because especially going back way back, people had a lot of really similar names and it, records get kind of foggy and such. And so it's kind of easy to mistake that a certain person might have been married to this other person and produced this offspring when actually it was just an, a different person with the same name. And then you can easily get off track on family trees. But, you know, doing the DNA test thing was like kind of cool and it recently updated and it updated in a way that I think is like, 
yeah. more closely resembling the information I actually tracked on my family tree type thing. Um, and it added uh, a couple of different locations in the Middle East than just um, Lebanon, well, like the Levant area. So that was really cool. Uh, at some point, somebody was from Cyprus, so that is really fun. And uh, yeah, the other rest is like southern France, northern Spain, uh, and then basically like the United Kingdom, Ireland, northern northwest Europe area. Uh, yeah, a majority, the, the most, the highest percentage is from the Levant. Um, and then like a very tiny bit of like northern Africa. I feel like people don't watch a lot of these very talky videos, so I'm probably not going to do a lot of them because, I mean, unless people suddenly start to have an interest in them. But uh, yeah, I think at this point people are kind of more on my channel to uh, search something very specific, like how to make medieval hoes. One thing I think I'm going to do with the channel is perhaps start splitting there, one thing I think I might do with the channel is start doing very small, uh, not small, but short videos each week, maybe on a Tuesday and do maybe like a Technique Tuesday. Obviously I'm not, you know, the authority on Technique, uh, but it might be fun to just do some very short videos that basically show a specific skill that might go into a larger project. For example, um, I'm going to do one on just setting up your loom for weaving, you know, warping it basically. And then I'll do videos on the actual weaving. And I'm probably also going to do various ones like finger loop braid for my upcoming garments, how to, um, do an eyelet, how to make fabric buttons, and this is something that I have been nervous about, but I think that I want to try to attempt doing a woven hem on my teal wool dress. I might change my mind, but it would be interesting to attempt it and I guess, you know, for his history's sake, I should try it. My gold short sleeve lace-up kirtle is probably going to be lined, uh, so I think that I likely won't be actually uh, doing a woven hem on that. But I might actually do like a very small woven band that I sew onto the end of the sleeves. Well, there will be short sleeves. But I'm really excited about that one, except for... I have to, uh... I have to take apart that huge curtain, which if you saw my thrifting video, you'll know is absolutely massive and I've been putting it off because I need to bring it into my apartment and I didn't want little kitten litter feet running all over it. Even though I love their little feet. See? Yeah, you, you can't really see the edge on this. On, on the bottom one you can see the whip stitch. I don't know. I guess let me know which one you think is better. Probably, I guess I could have done the other kind on the bottom as well. But I sort of was trying to pull the edges of the other uh, layer together. Thank you all for watching and be sure to subscribe. Let me know what your favorite type of videos are on this channel. Uh, if you're a subscriber, let me know what video you're most excited about if I post it. You know, like, is it weaving? Is it dyeing? Is it, um, sewing or just like big projects overall or uh, are you more interested in smaller technique videos and uh, if you want follow me on instagram i hopefully i'm gonna do like maybe a fun 
photo shoot with all of my medieval clothes when I am on holiday to visit my in-laws in England for uh, December. And I will be really, really excited to uh, get some more sort of authentic looking medieval content because Los Angeles is not cutting it. Yeah, it's very hard to make a shot that isn't just full of dry, dead grass and cactuses and lizards. Or just the city. And most of that is not aesthetic. And now I am just finishing up. I've gone all the way around and I've gone back to this part and now I am just going to try to tuck these little edges in. A hat! Ta-da! Now, we'll be cutting to some reveal footage in the hat. Thank you all for watching and be sure to subscribe because we are super close to 100 subscribers. See you next time.